Welcome. This is Barry Jones from the Angel School, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for March 16th through the 22nd, 2020. So before I begin, I'd like to just uh, make a few announcements. One is that this um, March 17th, um, which is actually today, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, there we will be having a live chat. I mentioned it last week. I'm feeling really guided about this meditation, which I want to um, focus on for healing and p- inner peace and, you know, just to relax and, you know, sort of alleviate some anxieties, etc. cetera. Um, around what's going on globally. And um, the other intention I had, of course, was to also focus on the questions that we ask, whether they're always predictive versus um, how to create a path, you know, towards our goals. So I'm, (laughs) this morning, I'm just really feeling like, I'm not sure how long the meditation will will last. I want to keep it within an hour. So if the meditation goes close to the hour, then I will just schedule another session, um, live chat, uh, probably the following week or the week after uh, for this particular topic I had had in mind on um, questions, you know, that you propose to the divine. So um, we just be open-minded about it. but we'll see how it goes. And um, and then the other thing was, is that of course, um, that since this is my birthday month, and actually it's on St. Patrick's Day this week, the 17th, um, I had offered my, to my former clients and, and new clients, um, the pr- uh, promotional, first time promotional, um, reading discount so from for the hour reading so if you um had been thinking about getting a reading with me um that's available for this month um all right and i feel like i'm missing something else but i don't think so all right so let's begin and we'll just see you look forward to seeing you all tonight at 7 p.m on the YouTube live chat. So let us now just take a deep breath and let's focus on connecting in with the peace and alignment that resides within our inner being. And just allow yourself to have this opportunity of rewards, spiritual rewards. It's really important that when you have this sort of sense inside of you, that like something is pushing you, or it's really not pushing you, but it's actually criticizing you, telling you that you're not doing enough and that you need to figure out something. You need to come up with a solution. You need to try to do this. What are you doing? You know, you can't just sit around and just like, you have to stop and breathe. And you have to know that you can't control everything. And you definitely have less control when you seek to fix the external. You know, it's, it's like you're focused on the effects and you, we all know that if we really want to change the effects, we have to start with the cause. And thank goodness the cause really is it's within. It's where we're focused, what what thoughts are we focused upon that's creating the effects that we're experiencing? The only place that you can really get control 
is from within. And so, therefore, when you think about that, then you say to yourself, what kind of control can I have within? Can I make myself be quiet? Can I make myself be at peace? No, you really can't make because the cause is greater than you. The cause is you, but it is greater than you. Because you are a facet of oneness. You are a facet of this infinite intelligence. You are a facet of the infinite gift of peace, of love, support. You are a part of oneness. And this infinite intelligence within you is the true cause of what you desire. It is always the cause of what we reach for as perfection. But what we do all quite often is that we forget that we are a part of, a facet of, that which we truly desire. The love, the abundance, the peace, the health. And thank goodness we're not the only aspect that we're not alone, let's put it that way, in our cause. Thank goodness we're not alone in our own causation. So, therefore, when you go within, don't try to control anything, but allow yourself to become one again with that infinite intelligence that understands what you need and what your desire is, that understands the perfection of peace, health, alignment. See, it's all integrated within the causation of oneness. It's already solved. All the solutions are there. And the only thing that you have to do is allow them. Reconnect with them. Let it reconnect with you. Don't try to reconnect with it. But allow it to reconnect with you. Let it integrate with you. Let it bring in the alignment of peace, the alignment of health at this divine perfection level. Let it restore the love, the unconditional love within you, within your mind, your perspective, and your beliefs. Let Allow yourself to be healed as you need it. Not where you think it need, it's needed, but where you need it, where you deserve it. Not where you think you deserve it, but where it knows you deserve it. Because once you allow this, excuse me, <coughs> then you will understand that you are not alone, that it's just not I, you, but it is all. And then when you allow the full power
power and strength of the support of the universe to work through you to realign and reorder and refocus the effects within and then without, <coughs> you'll find it so much easier to understand why you don't have control over what's going on outside of you and why you needn't try. Because every time you try, you actually just sort of escalate the effects. And think about for a moment if everyone collectively just stepped back into this oneness. And then imagine that this divine intelligence is flowing through each and every one of us. So it's like we all get the same updates, you know, energetic emails, energetic texts, whatever form of communication, the same memos. And we're, we have an intuitive understanding of what the right action is. And see, you will participate. You will be, you are the physical ears, arms, feet, etc., mind of God within this world. But if we were all tuned in and being aware of the intuitive messages, the intuitive um, actions that is necessary to help co-create the perfection of health, the perfection of love, abundance, etc. If we were doing this this way together, then we would feel less like we were pushing and struggling and we'd feel more like we were cooperating. And if you've ever been in a situation um, like I remember being here after 9-11 and there was so much love in the city and, and you could feel the cooperation. It was just something, that, it was um, very clear. And for the first time, you know, living in a city like this, you could feel like, although we weren't, didn't know everybody that was here, but you could feel like we were almost communicating in this way that I'm describing, that people were being more understanding is one aspect that you may recognize when we are cooperating. Another signal would be compassion. People were more compassionate, patient, supportive. And these are the things right now that we need globally. We've been responding to a social epidemic, psychological, political epidemic that has caused us to step way out of alignment, way out of alignment. As every moment that we re react and are triggered by the what we have deemed in our minds as a part of our judgment, the unbelievable acts. This has created quite a trigger in our own reality, in our immune system, in our, um, our practice. So our practice hasn't been as holy, quote unquote, as it could be as divine, as peaceful, as loving, 
as it could be. Because we've been feed, feed, fueling the fire, if you will. And so we've just gone, the, the fear has been escalating and reaching new, new, new heights. I mean, you know, where, and so something has to eventually break down right when you weren't meant for to for this your life your psychology was not meant to to um for this kind of lifestyle it's not healthy so now we attempt to to do more to fix the problems that we've created because we've given ourselves over not to our divine intelligence, to the oneness, but to the fear of our egos collectively. <clears throat> and where we are forced to be at this moment is to be in seclusion, sort of like the hermit or the high priestess, to be with ourselves. And that may start to drive a lot of people crazy after a while because you're so used to f fixing, 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 fixing everything. And there's nothing that you can do now. Even our planet and the thing, the changes we're seeing in our planet is the planet telling us that it's not healthy, that it's getting sick because we are becoming almost, we're whole, each one of us, if you think of each one of us as a cell, we are focusing negatively, so then that has an impact, right? So the only way that we can fix is by allowing ourselves to be what we truly are, the essence of what we really are and to focus. And at first, you are not gonna get it, what it means to just be and first before doing. We're not saying that doing won't come, but we're saying that first you have to be who you really are, which is that you have to remember that you cannot do anything without being a part of the collective, of oneness. Your strength does not come from your I, but from the we. And once you understand this, and once your point, your, that point of your being is your cause, your true cause and purpose, then the messages you will be on the same bandwidth of oneness and the messages that will be revealed that everyone will be receiving will then create a cooperative solution for healing diseases and viruses and all sorts of things. Our economy, our political climate, the earth and what you have to remember is that the divine perfection of creation cannot be destroyed because all things including you including it always is seeking to return through its free will to its true reality because the true reality of God is all these perfections. And because God is the true reality that exists, then these perfections are what really exist and our miscreations of 
disease, viruses, you know, poverty, um, poor mental health, and all this. These are our miscreations. These are our illusions that we are projecting. And because we spend so much time investing ourselves in them or trying to fight them, because either one of these sides is still giving attention to them, makes them real to us. So that's why the effect is not where we can have any real influence or control, but it's from within the causation of oneness within you, within that connects all of us together collectively. All right, so let's take a look at the card for this week passion and I saw this word earlier and I, th- I really feel like I know where this is going and it, you know when we focus on a passion when we focus on a passion we are on a different wavelength when we we're, first of all we're passionate the core passion is love not fear you know how bold and daring and courageous and empowered a passion causes you to feel act and do i mean it's 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 and believe rather so what you need to focus on right now is a passion but you say how can i focus on a passion when i'm afraid because take what you're afraid of and turn it into a purpose, not to fight, but to love. Because you know your only answer is to love. And through love, when you connect, when you allow yourself to love, you'll be connected to oneness. And what will surge within you is a purpose that will ignite a passion. And when you are blazing as a passion, it's almost like the the phoenix rising out of the ashes, you are singeing all of those negative effects that are being created, were created within your ego. So it says right now, and passion for me is also something that's intuitive. So it's like trust and follow your renewed passion in your love life and career. And this whole idea of intuition is a part of of, uh, passion. And to trust your intuition and follow your intuition. Follow, but this intuition is is co-created through passion. And passion makes you feel all kinds of good and bliss and, you know, and strength and power, knowingness that you can accomplish victoriously what has been placed within your soul and your heart. And seeing the word sacrifice and in this context, Yes, there are those beautiful sacrifices because you will sever yourself from the negative influences and impacts that you don't deserve. It's like, again, the phoenix rising out of the ashes. And Archangel Hanio, and this is very interesting that she's coming up because um, I've been working with, yes, yeah, since yesterday, a um, light blue ray, and which I would like to do t- this evening. So, um, really, just just see as if there's a, a flame of light blue all around you right now, and just. Focus on the feeling of love or the idea of love or 
divine love and passion without even having a specific idea of what that might mean for you. But just hold the general thought and allow that to be a part of the vibration of what this light blue flame is for you. You might, um, it's funny because I had pulled the card from my um, Keepers of the Light deck by Kyle Gray, the Archangel Faith, and she had, it has in this, the, the light blue. So, and um, Archangel Haniel's light blue is sort of this pale blue that you see around here. So you may end up um, focusing on some of the various colors of blue. And it may shift for you going to the pale. So you may start at a certain level of the blue and it may shift for you. <coughs> All right. So let me just tune in and just see if there's any additional. So information um, from Archangel Haniel. But this is the part where the intuition comes in. Um, and Archangel Haniel is an, in alignment with the, the moon. So um, energy and the cycles of the moon. And, um, and with your intuition and this whole area. So this is a very sensitive time right now, emotionally as well. Um, and so this light blue, she keeps writing the word love, can just help bring in those higher influences of love of clarity, because this color is like the sky, right? Um, and so a sense of clarity, um, just sort of letting go and sort of letting the blue skies in, so to speak. You know, there's a, a lot of cloudiness right now, and we need to um, just allow in those clear skies in our imagination, in our mind. All right, so let's take a look at the first card for the beginning of the week. <laughs> it's the beginning of intuition, um, the page of cups, and this water symbol here and seeing that light blue in the water. And, you know, the pages are about a new, represent a new beginning, new lessons. And I've, I've actually kept seeing the word lesson while I was talking in the beginning. So there is a new lesson, I think, that we are all really learning here at this time. And we're learning to really uh, pay attention to our feelings, to pay attention to the, our emotions and how they play a role in developing the effect and how they are sort of almost the sort of the you can get a sense of what the effect is going to be based on the emotions that you keep investing yourself so before it becomes physical you can pay attention it's also it's like like emotional body sort of like that step in between the mind thought ideas and it's also a marriage of thoughts becoming beliefs. And then it has to, once we have a belief, I think that's really when we get the emotional content starts to take shape. And then, of course, the physical manifestation or effects of it. So if we were to pay more attention, it's like the lesson right now is to pay really careful attention to the, the emotions that come up within you. And like this page, you're discovering things in that emotional realm, like your connection to love. You know, she can represent an experience of new love. And this can not only be romantic, but, you know, a passion, right? Like when we, we have this new, um, exciting um, experience, um, that causes us to 
find a new purpose for life and a passion for life. And so, um, or it allows us to want to create something. So there, there is that experience there. And then there's, for most of us, we, and we've been working with our emotions and, you know, we've tried to heal and all this kind of stuff. But the thing is, what we're learning the lesson today is that we really can't do anything if we don't connect in to the greater universe. Sort of like she has a little bit of the ocean in this bag and we kind of feel like, you know, we're isolated in this way. But what we're really a part of is the the greater part of the she has the, the, the ocean behind her and she's really up, still a part of that not separate of that and that's what we're learning right now that we have to stay connected to the vast field of of energy and and oneness all right let's take a look at the card for the middle of the week and this is the three of wands and so this it, you know, she's looking out and you see another ocean. So we have, you know, a lot of water in the cards so far. And she's looking out that window. Windows are for me a window of opportunity. She's looking out at the horizon. Um, the sun seems to be setting. And she's been, you know, doing some work and planning, um, writing out some ideas. But she's taking a moment to... To, to kind of look out there at what she wants. So she's, she, this is like sort of a gathering of an intention. This is where, um, you know, she was trying to balance out some things and then she just realized that she needed to just allow, give herself a, take a break and allow for integration of what, of those ideas. So, you know, um, <clears throat> it feels like emotionally um, you need to allow for an integration of maybe something that occurred to you, something that popped up, um, something, something new that you hadn't thought of before or something that touched you. And I keep saying the word passion. And so you need to allow for an integration of that. And... And in that integration process, this is not a lazy process. This is not a, a nothing happens process. It, integration it suggests action, but what it's a, the kind of action is that your mind starts to develop um, new opportunities. So you start to visualize, or, or, or vision comes into more into focus. Okay. Um, for instance, I'm just seeing a book on a stand, and um, some of you may be uh, working on some kind of writing for whatever purpose. It could be a book, it could be you're putting together a document or whatever. But if you allow for the integration period, you know, after you've done your little um, brainstorming a bit, then allow for an integration, and what will happen is um, you'll have a better picture of what it is that you're really aiming for. So that means you're gonna, once that happens, that create that expansion happens, because that's what the number three is, um, and that you give birth, you allow this moment to give birth to that expansion, what will happen is, is that you will have um, a plan or a strategy or an outline that will motivate you and um, really help you to get you know, so more, more seriously um, grounded and focused moving forward. Let's take a look at the card. So we have two court cards, which might suggest aspects of our personality this week that we may want to develop and incorporate in this whole process. So the Queen of Swords, I mean, I love this deck because it's like body positive. I mean, it's got, you know, um, diversity, and, you know, transgender, it's got everything in this deck. And it's just wonderful for our modern times um, as a deck to read. And, you know, here we have the Queen of Swords and she's sitting in a, an office chair. So, you, you know, it, it's like, you know, she's someone who's... Um, 
she, although she's a queen here, um, and, and it doesn't mean that the queens are subservient, but what it does mean is that, and I like with because of this chair, that, that they do share an equal and different leadership role, all right? So she runs things as well. And, you know, you see all these clouds just billowing behind her. And so she's got that knife in her hand and she's inviting you. And it almost feels like she's inviting you to, to, to get clear. You know, like you see all those clouds and you would want to run because you would think like, and I'm just going to play with our general psychology. You know, um, you may see these clouds and think, oh my God, something um, spooky is about to happen. And so you don't want to face it. And isn't that like what our ego does to us all the time? It constantly makes us afraid of things. You know, it turns everything into the boogeyman. <laughs> and then what we do is we avoid it. But look, she's saying, come, let me show you. It's nothing. It's all in your imagination. And, you know, you may find her to be like that teacher that you may not ever want to mess with kind of thing. But you need this kind of courage. You need someone who's not afraid to tell it to you like it is to, you know, call you on your stuff. And right now... You need to face your fears and let it call you out on your stuff so that you can stop running that stuff as a part of your thought process and beliefs. Because we are talking about the element of air here. And, you know, we've been talking about water, but now we have air and we're going back to that. See, it's at that level of thought and beliefs where we need to sort of cut the crap. And right now, people are panicking a lot about a lot of things. People have been panicking a lot about a lot of things for a long time, especially in the last three years. And we've been judging either side and judging each other. And the thing about it is all that judgment has caused a threat to ourselves. That's what it's done. It didn't make the world better. It's actually created that now we have this global threat and we're all afraid. And why are we afraid? I mean, you know, why are we not at peace with what is? And why are we not focusing on how to create or co-create the peace that we all deserve? not just for ourselves, that, that we all deserve. <clears throat> but we can't get to that if we can't face our stuff. And all of this stuff that's been going on has been to do this, to call each and every one of us out. Because this, what all that has been going on does not happen unless does not manifest itself unless they're at this level, it's such a, unless there's enough of us feeding into it, whether we're on one side of it or the other. Okay? So it's something that we got to call ourselves out on because what we're doing is, and I've been trying not to use this word, but we're, you know, we're, we've become like the cells in the body, like a cancer cell that turns on its own body, that turns on its earth, that turns on its collective health. And this is no good. And so let's first... Let's first deal with our, let's deal with ourselves. You know, um, there's been a lot of racism and I as an African-American for the first time, you know, I mean, it's always been with me, but I started to really get upset, maybe in the context of my story, rightly so, but in the context of 
our new paradigm, not really so, because this is not the way to heal that. It's, we have, and all the other things, they need, they gotta go through the, the phase. As long as we understand that things are happening because they need to. And then we understand that we are gonna be called to be present in a particular way. And the hope is that we find the way of a passion. That is to say that it is intuitive, meaning we're in alignment with oneness. We're not just focused on the I, and I don't mean that as in terms of selfish, but I mean by that, um, that you are alone. Because that's what caused us to fight against something instead of bringing forth the solutions, bringing forth the alignment. Because you feel accused when you fight. But when you can bring forth, you don't feel accused or judged. You feel healed and now you want to share that. And all that is what we consider wrong has already been healed and the solutions are already formulated within the support of oneness. So we all need to stop focusing on the I, focus, then focus on we so we can all get the emails, the messages, the communications, the inspired passions to bring forth the divine perfection. All right, so let's take a look at the card, perfect. More water. <laughs> but the king of water, the mastery of, of this whole plan, which is he represents being at peace in the midst of the storm. I mean, the waters around him are raging, but he's mature enough. He's seen it all. He has a lot of spiritual experience. He has a lot of experience dealing with relationships and and I mean by that you know with the world he's seen the world of experience and he knows he understands psychology he knows how to deal and so we are are being asked that's what we've been discussing is he's in connection with that oneness he's out there in the world on the big ocean recognizing that everything is connected and why should he be afraid? He could say to the waters, peace be still. And it would, for him, be peaceful and, sti and still. He knows where the causation is for him. Okay? And this is where we really need to focus, which is what the card on the bottom is. Our focus for the week or the, what's, it, what's motivating what's going on above and what's happening for us, okay? So I send you lots of love and angel blessings, and I thank you for joining us this week, and I hope that this has been helpful to you and clear in a way that you can receive it. So if you're looking for an angel reading and you're looking for support and clarity about how you can work in this way, um, feel free to contact me at theangelschool.com and um, which is on the services page. You can find that link below. Um, also, you know, follow us on for the daily cart messages. You can do that now on YouTube. I post them there as well as my Facebook page. And also through Twitter, you can find um, the videos and the um, please don't forget to subscribe, um, you know, like and share um, because this is for, for me the way that this information um, gets out there for those who need it. And I invest, trust you um, who feel drawn to this channel um, to know who 
it would be of value to. All right? So, God's peace, and I'll see you tonight. God bless you.